Welcome to this section in Mastering Elasticsearch 5.0 entitled Managing Indices. If you're looking to leverage the full power of Elasticsearch, it's important that you have a deep understanding of indices. In this section, we aim to take a deep dive into indices. We'll start off by going through the two most common index patterns found in Elasticsearch, monolith and rolling. We'll then move into part two where several important index management features are covered. Finally, this section is concluded with a look at shrinking leucine segments to create smaller indices in a process known as force merge and the rollover feature, which lets you use an alias to roll over an index based on an age or size threshold. Welcome to this video at Mastering Elasticsearch 5.0 entitled most common index patterns. Before we get started, I'm going to quickly review what it takes to start up an Elasticsearch cluster. We should be familiar with this at this point, but I just want to quickly go over it again. First and foremost, of course, you need to download Elasticsearch, Cabana, and Xpat from the URL down below. Next, to start Elasticsearch and Cabana, you would do the same thing. So the first thing you want to do is you want to CD to the root directory of where you downloaded your core files. So for example, you have your Elasticsearch download at a given location. You CD to that location. And from there, and this is all through command line, of course, you want to execute bin forward slash Elasticsearch. And for Cabana, it's bin forward slash Cabana. The two most common index patterns you'll see in Elasticsearch are monolith and rolling. Monolith indices are one of the most common index patterns found in Elasticsearch. In fact, you've seen many examples. Basically, monolith indices are those created when external data is pushed into Elasticsearch for indexing and aggregation purposes. Once in, the data is spread across or scaled out over multiple nodes in a cluster. This is achieved through sharding. One important thing to note about monolith indices, while they're generally optimized for search, there is the occasional need to perform bulk updates. Let's say, for example, if the mapping needs to be changed for an index, it is necessary to recreate the index or re-index it. To ensure consistency. This situation, in the interest of speed, may require more shards, scaling out that is, to handle the re-indexing load. More specifically, sharding allows more than one node to participate in the re-indexing process. But wait, you can't change the number of shards once the index has been created in Elasticsearch, or can you? With Elasticsearch 5.0, shard count became mutable, and this is via a process known as index shrinking. As a result, you can more easily adjust shard numbers to accommodate the right intensive nature of reindexing. Index shrinking allows you to reduce the number of shards on a given index, but there's a catch. The new number of shards must be a factor of the original number of shards for the given index. While leveraging shards to achieve speed up during re-indexing, it is also important to ensure that shards are neither too big nor too small. As a result, while there are variations of document counts per shard and size on disk that can be played with, a good combination is 1 million documents per shard and a maximum of 5 to 10 gigabytes on disk. And that's just a side note. Back to index shrinking. Let's take a closer look at selecting target shard count for index shrinking. If the primary shard count is, say, 10, then the index shrink feature allows you to reduce the number to 5, 2, or 1. Note that if the count is a prime number, a number that is only divisible by itself and 1, the shard count can only be reduced to 1. 
So if, for example, the primary shard count was 13, you would only be able to reduce it to 1. Whereas 14 could be reduced by 7, 2, or 1. Index shrinking lets you start an index with many shards to support data intensive operations and then subsequently reduce the shard count to accommodate read intensive operations. And this allows you to more efficiently use resources. It is also important to understand that index shrinking is not re indexing. There are two totally different operations. This is important because while re-indexing involves substantial overhead to essentially rebuild an index, index shrinking simply relinks index leucine segments. We'll look at leucine segments in a bit. Now let's take a quick look at rolling indices. As the name implies, these indices are created on a rolling or continual basis. The best example of a rolling index would be log data, where Based on time series data, indices are created over a given period of time, with indices containing older data being archived. While Elasticsearch is generally read optimized for search, the nature of rolling indices requires that a given index be write optimized during periods of huge data ingestion. A good example of this is sensor data that is tracked for 24 hour periods of time. Each 24-hour period yields a new index, which is write-intensive, or I should say it's the write-intensive period. This would actually prompt oversharding. This would necessitate oversharding because, as previously stated, during write-intensive period, you can employ more shards to better help the process. And then, once that 24-hour period is over, the index is subsequently archived. It's no longer being written to, I should say. And as a result of that, you can reduce the number of shards because this is the read intensive period. This is the optimal way to manage resources in an Elasticsearch cluster. 